All right, so we're here in lesson number 12, and in the previous examples, we've actually run into a few cases where we've had uh, bad inputs going into the code, and it's created exceptions or errors which have crashed the application. And so in this video, in this lesson, we're gonna focus on how to do exception handling or error handling, so that way we can make sure that the program doesn't crash and uh, create a weird experience for the user. Now what I want you to do is I want you to create a new Windows Forms application. You'll call this lesson number 12 and uh, you'll add a button in a text box, the button here for do stuff. And then we're just going to go ahead and actually put in some inputs and then just create a results uh, label here that we've done similar to the previous exercises. Okay, so what we're gonna actually do here is we're going to expect that the user is going to be entering in some sort of number here in the inputs text box. And so that could be an integer, one, two, three, or it could be a number with decimals. So really what we're gonna do is we're going to try to convert the uh, text field that's coming from the user input and convert that to a double underneath the hood. So just remember that here on this text box control at the lower right hand corner when we look at the properties, we'll see that we've called this control uh, or this basically this text box text underscore number input. And we're specifically going to be reading whatever the user has entered in the text field here or entered into that text box. All right, let's double click on the do stuff button. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start out by declaring a variable here. And I'll just call this UI text. And basically what we're doing is we're gonna get from that text box, we're gonna get the text field here. And remember that when I hover over uh, this text field, you'll see here that the IntelliSense shows us that the uh, data type that's being expected or returned here is a string, but we need to convert this into a double or a number. All right, so what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna just go ahead and say double, and I'll just say uh, the double value as the variable name. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do this double dot parse method. Okay, so we sort of showed these parsing methods for converting strings into numbers in an earlier training video. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pass that UI text uh, string value there into that and try to get uh, basically the code to convert this string into a double value. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually add a, a number of 10 to that, all right? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to return the, that new number where I added 10 to the original number and I'm gonna show that on the user interface under the label results. All right, so I'll say label results text field is going to equal double value. Now, what you'll see here is that Visual Studio is actually showing an error and it says, hey, I can't convert double to string. So again, the uh, label on the user interface is expecting the text field to be a string. So we need to use the dot to string method here. And that will convert that number to a string value. That way we can set it on the user interface. All right, let's go ahead and actually run this code. And so if I come in here and I type in 32, and say do stuff, you'll see that it adds 10 and we now have a result of 42 displayed on the label here on the user interface. So that worked out perfectly. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in hello and I'm just gonna go ahead and say do stuff and here we have an error or an exception that's been thrown by the application. And the reason why there's an error is because we tried to convert a text value into a number and basically uh, the code and compiler cannot do that. So we have an exception and an error and if the user was actually running this executable, they would see a big old error um, you know, dialog box appear and then the, the application would crash and we don't want that to happen. So to stop this code, we'll just go up to debug menu, stop debugging, and then that will discontinue the execution of the code. All right, now to stop this from happening, what we're gonna do is we're gonna encapsulate or wrap this up into a try catch statement. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in try and then I'll hit enter here. And when I do an open curly brackets, it's going to automatically uh, have an, uh, or create an open and a closed curly brackets. We actually want to, again, um, sort of embed or encapsulate all of this code that we had inside of the curly brackets for the try statement. So I'll add the closing curly brackets here and you'll see that Visual Studio indents those lines of code. So essentially the way this works is I'm basically telling the program that, hey, I want you to try to execute all these lines of code. If everything works correctly, then it's gonna function and do its job. 
if an exception gets thrown or an error happens, then basically I want to catch that. So the next phase here is if an exception gets thrown, we're going to do what is called a catch statement. Now, in this case here, I'm actually just going to go ahead and say that if something does go wrong, I'm going to say label results dot text field is incorrect value input. So that basically is telling the user that, hey, you put something wrong in the uh, text box on the user interface that the program can't use or can't work with. All right, so let's just go ahead and run this code. So I'm just gonna go ahead and build it and I'll type in hello again. We'll say do stuff and it says incorrect value input. So this is basically the try catch statement has now exception handled or error handled uh, essentially that incorrect input when I put a string and I try to convert it to a double. So let's go ahead and put uh, 32 back in there, say do stuff, and now we have 42. So this is clean. This is, this is not interrupting or throwing an error or breaking the program. We're basically handling that the user has entered in something incorrectly and we're telling them that they've done it wrong without crashing the program. Now, one other, one other thing that I'll explain here is that you can actually put uh, some parentheses and you can do this thing called exception, which is uh, basically a class object here. And then you can just call this EX or um, you know whatever you want. This is just a variable name here. So that way we can get information about it. So basically what happens is that, let's say an exception is thrown and I wanna get the reason or what was the exception and I wanna tell the user something more than, hey, you just put something incorrect in there. Well, what I can do is instead of incorrect uh, value input, I can just come in here and I can say ex.message and that will uh, basically take whatever the full message is that the uh, program or compiler kicks back at us and it'll display that to the user. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So if I run the program, I'll just go ahead and type in hello again. I'll say do stuff and here it says input string was not uh, in a correct format. So essentially, um, you know, you have to kind of watch out here. Sometimes just reporting straight up the exception string and message that comes from the code is not really human readable uh, to the end user. So you may actually want to catch and see if this exception is specifically a certain type and then control the message that you want to send to that user. So in an example to do that, basically what we would do here is instead of this exception EX, which uh, handles all exceptions, uh, what we would do is we would just put in here, we know that this is a format exception. And so essentially this catch statement is only going to catch format exceptions. And then it will put whatever custom message that we want in here. So um, string was input instead of integer or, or number. Okay. Now the thing here is that this uh, exception will only catch uh, format exceptions. So if I still need a catch all for everything else, then I either need to, to do that EX, um, you know, that exception EX and display that, um, or I just need to have basically an empty catch here um, that will just catch anything else. So we would just say label results dot text unknown error. So that's basically how you can handle and display different messages to the user based on the type of exception that was thrown from the code.